Hello, my YouTube family. Yeah, it is um, Wednesday, March 26, 2014. You did not see me yesterday. I did not go to work yesterday. I woke up in pain, back, and cramps, like both. As if one is not bad enough. No, I had to have both. So, yeah, I wasn't going to go to work. And um, so I didn't. Called in sick. And you know when I call in sick, I'm sick the whole damn day, so no video for you. Um, and I went to the doctors this morning, and now it's a question of seeing a radiologist, and the radiologist may or may not, but most likely might, tell me that he's I've got to go under the knife. I need to think about that for a few. I'm in a little discomfort still. Apparently, it's the, the coccyx bone or the bone before the coccyx or whatever that's deteriorating a little. But it's like a tumor, but a very benign tumor. It's kind of dwindling off. I think it's personally old age, but um, we shall see. I have things to think about. I don't, I've been under the knife once before. It's not a pleasant, pleasant um, you know, situation to be in. So, food for thought, food for thought. He said it's not, It's you don't have to have it. It's not something, an emergency. It's really up to me. If I'm fine the way I am, if I choose to walk with a cane for the rest of my life, that's fine. Even though I tell him that at times I really don't need the cane. I just really basically walk with it when I'm going out or to work. At home, I don't use the cane at all. I limp ever so slightly. And sometimes if I'm like, going to like a pharmacy or whatever and I'm parked very close to the pharmacy, I leave the cane inside because it's only a few steps in. I walk in, I do what I have to do and I come out. So that's basically it in a nutshell. So um, this is going to be a face of the day today, people. Oh yes, this turtleneck has not been acting right all day long. And well, I'm home now, so just deal. Um. I've got the color tattoo, the rich mahogany on. You can it's it's like my um eyelid but better, so you really can't even tell that I have it on. It's the exact same shade as my eyelids. So um that I have uh my new blush, my new sleek blush, which came in this packaging. The limited edition 2012. This one is in the color honor. And I believe it is the dupe for the rose gold in the sleek. Very, very nice. I love this shade, people. I love this shade. There it is. And it is on my cheeks. Oh. Very. Oh. Very nice. Just gives them a little punch of color. I love that. So that is honor. This was a limited edition. But it's the same as Rose Gold in Sleek. Sleek's Rose Gold, same damn thing. Which I also have, but it's not called Rose Gold. It's in the, the Blush by 3, also known as something else, but I forget. So this is basically it in a nutshell. Ask the blush. Me lovey. And now finally, lips. Um, I lined my lips with my NYX Rose Brown. Rose brown lined, and I'm wearing the Rimmel Show Off, and this is in Light Year, 601 Light Year. And that is Light Year. There it is. It's a very beautiful nude. I don't think it has any pink in it, not really. It's just like a kind of tan. A tan nude. Love it. The formulation of these are awesome. And they don't really have a smell that much. I need to pick up a little bit more of these. I know that they're slowly going off the shelves. And you know me. <laughs> Late to the party. Um, But I need to pick up more of these. Now that there's no such thing as a no buy. But I'm low on funds. Because... This payday is taking forever to come. I have to wait until next Monday for payday. 
So, and that's usually the bulk of my bills. So I really don't, mm. plus this Saturday, even though it's before I get paid, I have to get my car inspected. It's the end of March, people. March is my month to get my car inspected. And yes, I could have done it last Saturday, but lazy ass as I am. So now my back is to the wall and yeah, pressure and I have to get the car inspected this Saturday. Okay. So there you have it. So that's the blush and that's the lip gloss. Me lovey, me lovey a lot. Yes, indeed. So that's it, people. That's face of the day. Um, okay, so, you know, I was basically laying low yesterday and I was watching, what was I watching? I think I was watching The View. Yeah, I was watching The View, of course, because it was Whoopi. My girl, Whoopi Goldberg. Love her to pieces. Okay, can I just say, this woman and I, I think we're separated at birth, even though she's just a couple of years older than me. Um, yeah, we're separated at birth because everything that she says, I happen to agree with. We think the same, if that makes any kind of sense. We think the same. I don't think like Barbara. I don't think like Sherry. I certainly don't think like Sherry. And I certainly don't think like Jenny. I think like Who Whoopi. Every time they, they come up with a, a very controversial subject, you know, everybody's talking at the same time, screaming over each other and blah, 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 blah. And then Whoopi will just sit back. She'll sit back and then she'll say what I think. And when she says whatever she's thinking, that's the same damn thing I'm thinking. But did you know that Whoopi Goldberg has a, a YouTube channel? Hell to the year. She even told us about the YouTube channel. Um, I think it's Riding with Whoopi or something like that. And it's, they're just little two-minute, two, three-minute clips of her. I think either going to work or, or or the drive going back home. And she's in the car with her makeup artist and her agent or something like that, her manager or her makeup artist, whatever. And, you know, when you're in a car with people, subjects just come up. So it's just a topic of whatever is in the car. And then they start talking about it. And it's, it's too hilarious. So, yeah. I was all into Whoopi yesterday because after I watched The View, I came to the computer and I did not know that she did another Whoopi on Broadway. She did two. The very first one that really catapulted her career. That was back in 85, I think. And she did one in 2000 or 2010 or something like that. Whoopi on Broadway. I, and the whole show is on YouTube. So I watched the whole damn show. I fell out. She is so damn funny. But she's the type of comedian in her comedy is the type that, you know, she does say foul words or what have you, but she'll make you laugh, but at the same time, she'll make you think. And I love that kind of comedy. Her and Louis Black. I love those two guys. Louis Black, and then there's another one. He's got a show on Comedy Central. He's got white hair. I forget his Bill, Bill Moyer or Bill, Ma Bill Maher, I think that's his name. These are the type of comedians that I like because they they deal sometimes with politics. Well, mostly Louis Black and Bill Maher definitely deals with politics. And they do stand up sometimes. But even when they have a show of their own and they have guests, they'll say something funny. But it'll also make you think. They'll give you something to laugh about. But while you're laughing, you go, hmm, oh, wait, that's funny, but wait, what she's saying is true, or, oh, wow, I never thought about it that way. I love that kind of comedy, the comedy that just makes you think. I don't like brainless, you know, eh, comedy. That's why I don't watch comedies on television. I really don't. I, I can't think of one comedy show that I watch. Because to me, my opinion, they're brainless. They're just hee hee ha ha and they got the laugh track sometimes in the back and it's like they force you to laugh at it. And I can watch a whole show, a, a comedy or whatever, like if I'm at somebody's house or whatever and I have to watch whatever they're watching and they're watching comedies, they're, they're, they're cracking up and I'm just like, what? oh, was that supposed to be funny? Oh, was that funny? So it's, it's not that, you know, I have a nose up in the air kind of a thing because there's a lot of people 
that tend to think that, well, if you don't watch any comedies, you must be, you know, one of those drama people and you just only watch drama. Well, yeah, I do only watch drama. I'm sorry, but it's not because I'm snobby over comedy. Give me something that's worth laughing about and then I will watch it. But, you know, shows like That 70s Show, when it was on, is it still on? I don't know. Shows like that. I mean, I'm happy for Ashton Kutcher. That's the show that's catapulted his career and all of that. But I'm not, I'm not one. I did not. I, no. I just, I don't watch comedies. I'm, a, I'm strictly drama, suspense, that kind of thing, thriller. I'm not a comedy person. Even though some people tend to think I'm funny. I'm just being me. I'm, you know, I like to make people laugh. That's the funny thing. I like to make people laugh, but I don't like to watch comedies. Then again, I'm not a comedian. I'm just being me. So, you know, whatever. So I just wanted to share that. Now, here we go on part two of the uh, Real Housewives of um, Beverly Hills, the part two reunion. People are just, they're just crazy and they're stupid. That's all I have to say about the reunion. Now, can we talk about the Real Housewives of New York City? Holla. Yeah, remember her. Okay. Um, yeah. Okay. There was, there's this new chick. Her name is Kristen. She's a model. And apparently her husband had entered some race in the mud kind of a thing and she didn't want to do it but she did it for her husband now before the race started she told her husband you will stick by me right and he's like oh yeah we're gonna race together and i'll be right by his side and don't you worry about a thing boom the the gun went off or the bell went off or whatever he done left her ass in the dust literally she she was left in the dust heather wasn't even having anything to do with her because heather, heather was with her husband and Heather is the type of woman who's very competitive because she was raised with a lot of boys. So she's kind of, she's, she's that girl's guy. You know, she's that. He always does that. He always drops my glasses case. It's like in his way for some reason. And it drives me insane. I'm very pissed off at him right now. But, and if I look at him, He'll go look all over the place because you know he's guilty as hell. Yeah, you know you wrong. You see? Just ignore my... Yeah, uh-huh. Right. Why is it on the floor? Was it in your way? It wasn't bothering you. Why is it on the floor? Now you're trying to play it off like you hear something. Mm-hmm. I love him. I really do. But there are times when cats can be quite annoying. And when he does that, he there's a table in the living room. There's a box on that table. Every single time he hops on the table, that box happens to always be in his way. He just nudges it, nudges it, nudges it until it falls. Mm -hmm. And then he goes off. Like, okay, I've accomplished my task. I'm, I'm done now. Okay, can we get back to what I was talking about? Heather and Kristen in the mud race. Well, finally, everybody had finished. Kristen's husband finished. Heather, Heather's husband finished. And then they were trying to cheer Kristen on, and she finally finished. The husband was like, yay, honey. She was like, get the hell away from me. I really don't want to talk to you right now. She was pissed off as hell. And he was trying to tell her, you need to suck it up. And, you know, this is the type of of of, of activity where there's no crying and this, this, and that. She goes, I didn't want to do this in the first damn place. I did it for you. Before the race, you said you would stick by my side. The second the gun goes off, there you go. Left him, Left me behind. And she started to cry. And then Heather... You know, when they do that, the, the little interview thing, she was like, there, you, you can't be crying on, in this. Yeah, they, there's no such thing as crying in a mud race. You have to suck it up. Like even Heather. And before the race, 
Kristen said to Heather, you're going to be by my side, right? And Heather's like, yeah, I got your back. I got your back. Then it was Aviva and Carol. Aviva, she, Aviva, I have a feeling she's got a screw loose. She really does. She has a screw loose because she is convinced that Carol did not write her own book. I'm sorry, but Carol is a, oh, I don't know, writer. She is a journalist. That is her career. That's how she got started. Broadcast journalism. Journalists have to what? Write. Yes, they have to write. She is a writer. Now, all of a sudden, Aviva Dunn woke up one morning. And she said, you know what? I, I want to write a book. What do you write about? What, what book do you, what, what are you going to write about? And, and I'm on Carol's side 100%. You have never worked outside of the house ever. What are you, what are you going to, you going to write about how you lost your leg? Okay. And, and, and what demographic is that going to reach? Carol has substance. She has topics to write about. Aviva, you going to teach us how to be rich? What? I, I don't. So they had a blowout because Aviva's going around telling everybody that, oh, Carol didn't write her book. She's just, she, she had a ghostwriter do it. No, no, she didn't. Even Carol was with her editor and she snapped at the editor because she, she, it was the night before the party, the, the, the night after the party, where they, they went to blows. And, uh, you know, I, I guess the next day she had to go see her editor. And they were, she, she's finishing up another book of hers. And she was telling the editor about the situation, about this Aviva chick going around telling everybody that, A, I have a ghostwriter. And B, her publishing house, as if Aviva has her own publishing house, um, turned down Carol's book. And Carol's like, there was a bidding war on my book. It, there were two, more than one publication bidding after my book. They didn't turn me down. They were bidding for it and they lost the bid. There's a difference between losing the damn bid and not wanting my book. If they didn't want the damn book, they wouldn't have been in the bidding war to begin with. What the hell is Aviva's problem? Aviva, she's she going, Aviva's jealous is what I think it is. And Kristen had a lunch date with Aviva and pretty much told her so in a very nice way. In a very nice way, she just said, you know, from what I see, because I'm the new chick on the block and I'm just, you know, trying to get to know everybody. From what I see, I think there's jealousy involved. And Aviva didn't want to hear nothing about that. And then when Kristen mentioned that, Aviva turned to her because they were having, they, they met in Central Park. Aviva turned and she said, oh, look at the turtles. Aviva doesn't like to be wrong. She doesn't like when people point her out to be wrong. And when it's a one-on-one -on -one situation, she'll either start to yell or she will try to change the subject. She's the one that looks stupid. She's the one that looks stupid. Nobody else does. She's trying to make somebody else look stupid. No, she's the one that looks stupid. What else was going on? Ramona, uh, she's having a hard time letting go because her daughter is going to be going off to college. It's time to snap the umbilical cord, time to let the child go, okay? Because I, I forget what her daughter's name is, but she's, she has no problems. She's like, I'm ready to go, and I'm going to prom with my girls. And then her, her and her girlfriends came to the house and wanted to show Ramona their prom dresses. And Ramona's daughter is just all in red. She's got a beautiful dress. And... As soon as the girls came out, here go Ramona and Tiz, and oh my God, it was just yesterday you were born, and this, this, and that. Okay, I, I'm not a parent. I I don't get it. I mean, I can't really say that. I get it. I do. I mean, you know, before you know it, time flies and your child's grown. I see this through my own family. You know, my family, my cousin that I had, you know, dinner with last month or whatever. I remember him still at the age of 12. Now he's 30-something, and... Where the hell did the time go? He was a pain in the ass when he was younger, by the way. Anyway, so that that was going on. Did I co pretty much cover everybody? Um, Sonia, there's really nothing to talk about Sonia. She's hiring a new intern, and I don't know if she wants to scare the intern into leaving or 
you know, because she's constantly talking about, well, this is what ha I don't I don't deal with this and I don't deal with that. And then there's another intern who's been with her for a while. He's a male. And the one that she's hiring is a new man is a female. And, you know, she's talking about I, I want this done. I like this the way this is. And, and, and you can't do this. And so she said, well, if you come back tomorrow, then I know that I didn't scare you off. And, and the intern was like, no, I'll be here tomorrow. But that child was scared out of her mind. OK, and we're dealing with Sonia. So this is, you know, rich people sometimes are a little eccentric and they're a little out there. She's one of them. And uh, I really wish this new intern well. That's it. I have covered everything from <laughs> Real Housewives of New York City. OK. That is all next week. I think we finally see um, uh, the Contessa. She's back. So we'll we'll see what's going on with her. I don't, I don't know. These women crack me up. It's my guilty pleasure. All of these Real Housewives shows are my guilty pleasure. But I also have another guilty pleasure on VH1 Basketball Wives. I have missed six episodes of Basketball Wives L.A. I, I caught up a little bit yesterday on, I guess, the newest episode. <sighs> Jackie, that old bag of bones, she's still trying. Still trying to hang with the younger girls, still. And I don't know why Drea likes her. I, I really, I don't understand. She, you know, because most of the time Drea is crying and it's got to do with Jackie. So, and then there's some new chick call British. Yes, her name is British. B-R-I-T-T-I-S-H. I mean, weaves galore, wigs galore. They're not nay one of them wears their real hair. It's just, it's just annoying. But I watched that one anyway. The one I really watch, LA, I could take a leave. The one I really watch is basket, the regular Basketball Wives with my girl Tammy. Roman. Last season, you know, she she'd come to her senses and everything, and so it really wasn't that good because she she didn't get in anybody's face, and everybody was acting kind of normal. So the season was kind of hmm, kind of bland. Not that I am looking for the show to have beef with one person or another, but usually they do have beef with each other, but. Tammy is seeing a, a, a psychiatrist or, or a, 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 I don't know, some kind of a coach to contain her anger because Tammy will go from zero to a thousand in less than a second if you don't treat her right. So, yeah. And then Evelyn and, well, Evelyn had to, she had to tone it down a little bit too because uh, no sooner was she married to, um, I forget the football player's name, then not even six months in the marriage, he knocked her over, like butt, head butted her and gave her a bruise and she asked for a divorce and, well, what do you expect when on your first date you sleep with the man? Oh, she thought she was just oh so cute. O Ocho Cinco, that's his name. Ocho Cinco? Mm-hmm. That was him. Yeah. He was, he, I don't know why. Well, I know why. Because she was a good piece. Basically. Let's just put it out there. She was a good piece. Hey, any guy is going to want to, you know, have more of your juice if you're giving it to him on the first date. So, I don't want her acting all surprised and, oh, I didn't know he was like that. Of course you didn't know he was like, you didn't know him. You didn't know each other. And what you did know, he was always getting on your last nerves because you knew that he'd had a roving eye. You ain't the first. Oh, behind her back, he was sleeping with Jane, Janice, Joanne. He was sleeping with every single woman on the planet. What? What? You thought just because he put a ring on it, you're supposed to be oh so special? We are dealing with a football player. We are dealing with a guy who's got an ego the size of Texas. And you think you're going to be all that in his eyes? Anyway, that's it, people. I'm going on and on and on and on. On and on and on on and on. And the beat don't stop to break a dawn. Okay. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I, 
you know, I'm quite eccentric myself. Okay, that's it. That's all. This is look of the day. I kind of like it. It's very neutral. Um, the only thing is, I wish this was a little shinier. It's supposed to be a lip gloss. It's a lip lacquer. It's a lip lacquer. Thinking lacquer would mean shine, but it's not drying. It's very, it stays on your lips forever and a day, but it just doesn't give me any, it's, it's business, it's work business shine, but not really. There's not even any real shine to it. In any event, I love it. I love it. So, and that is that with that upon that. Okay, people hit me up. Let me know what you think. Let me know what you think of everything that I was talking about. Cause you know, I was talking about Whoopi and I was talking about television shows and face of the day and all of that. So there you have it. I love you. I love my YouTube family. Hit me up. Let me know what you think. And I will talk to you hopefully tomorrow. I was going to say tomorrow, but tomorrow's Thursday. If you don't see me on Thursday, you'll see me on Friday. Okay. I love you. Bye now.